I'm in the book of Judges, chapter number 16, verse 28. Remain standing just for a minute, just a wee minute. Let's do the reverence piece. If you have to sit, help, enjoy yourself. We'll read Judges, chapter number 16, verse 28. And then several scriptures I'll read while you are seated. This is at the end of Samson's four chapters, is the end of his life. And Samson and Samson. And Samson called on the Lord and said, Oh, Lord God, remember me. I pray you. Strengthen me. I pray you only this once. Oh God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines of my two eyes. Father, a blessing on this word in Jesus' name for a few minutes this afternoon. Remember me. Remember me. You may be seated. In Genesis chapter number 30, In Genesis chapter 30 and verse 22, and God remembered Rachel. And God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Everybody say, remember me. She conceived and bare a son and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph which means the Lord will add another son. In Genesis 42 and verse 9, the scripture says, And Joseph remembered his dreams. Call your name and say, Tudor, you ought to remember. Call your name and say, you ought to remember. Tudor, you ought to remember. Say it again. Tudor, you ought to remember. In Exodus 2 and verse 23, it came to pass in a process of time, in a process of time, that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed because of their great bondage. Verse 24 and God heard their groanings, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God had respect to the children of Israel. I wrote a little something as a preface to this message around memory. I'm not a psychologist, but with a number of crazy people I've worked with in the last 50 years of ministry, I might as well have a doctorate. Memory is a phenomenal gift. It will remind you of past and of that of both good and bad, so that mistakes that one has made should not be repeated again, and simultaneously, successes can reoccur time and time again. Memory is a blessing, as precious moments are preserved in the archives of one's life, 
such as people, places, events, and moments, can be regurgitated to give one hope and inspire others to keep on going on. Memory is the foundation pillar on which the future is built. Our memory is kept in our mind, in our active conscious mind. That is, the conscious and the subconscious. Therefore, to remember a thing, one would need to be active or to activate or to participate with activating the conscious mind. But the subconscious mind is always present and active. So the subconscious mind governs the memory, governs memory without one having to think about it. It also governs and functions within one's consciousness and its activities, such as unconscious thought. It, it rules in a domain such as muscle memory. I used to play golf years ago when I had time, and uh, the coach would say to me, you've got to practice this several hundred times so that you can have what they call muscle memory, where you do things subconsciously. For, <laughs> that was a bad drive. <laughs> the subconscious mind functions when one is asleep. And when a person is about to wake up, as the subconscious mind begins to hand over to the, sub, to the conscious mind, it precipitates a dream. And that dream is the handover takeover. It's in that moment that God may interject and give you a God dream, or it might be influenced by a demonic intervention, or just a natural process of conscious, subconscious to conscious. And so, the preacher then, whoever we are, should be a student and a scholar, learning at all times. Everything is a teaching moment, and every moment is a learning moment. Every person is a teacher. Every person is a student at all times. At all times. And so, as a preacher on this little trip of mine, I'll be away from home for six weeks, I have 19 conferences. And so, as my custom is, might be unreasonable, on my behalf, I do not preach the same thing again, which is crazy. <laughs> and the style I normally involve myself, you know, engage in is a lot of research to substantiate what I said. And so at the end of this message, I have a bibliography of all the references, lest Somebody from Valor. <laughs> asks me. And so, as one that does research, go in and study the word to obtain a canon. Not theologically, a canon. And once you obtain a canon through study, when you get into the pulpit, the Holy Spirit will provide the gunpowder and the fire. Go into the pulpit, rather, before you go into the pulpit, go into the study and get the mechanics so that when you get into the pulpit, the Holy Spirit will provide the dynamics. 
George Buttrick said, Preaching is hard when you have to take a text. But preaching is easy when the text takes you. Paul Scherer said, when you read the Bible, you generally have hundreds of texts pulling at your coattails, inviting you to preach them. The early church, an amazing church, could say, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. The 21st century church, however, says, silver and gold have I much, but will hardly ever say to a layman, rise up and walk. And so, in the words of Elton, to true blood, we need to study our study to show ourselves not ashamed so that our word can touch the layman as it fixes the spirit man. Somebody say, I have to remember. The agent given to help us remember is the Holy Spirit. I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you a helper, and he, the helper, will bring to your remembrance the remembrance, not just the words that Jesus taught. Remembrance is the way the first Adam was before the fall, incomparable and perfect. The way you ought to behave as a human being in absolute and total dominion. And so if you are sincere, as I would assume you are, the Holy Spirit will remind you not of what you've studied in your study, but remind you of the whisperings of Almighty God when he spoke to Adam before the fall. Because we were all in Adam when God walked with his son in the cool of the day. And the Holy Spirit was there, will remind you of those evening conversations on how to be a being of dominion. Shout, help me remember. And so the scripture says, God remembered. Not that he has amnesia, but God brings to remembrance times and seasons he has placed in his power. God remembered Sarah. And the thing about Sarah was that uh, Abimelech in chapter 20 of Genesis had taken Sarah because she was looking so fine. And Abraham said to Sarah, I said, baby girl, please tell them you're my brother because they'll kill me to take you. And so God is half Italian in that scripture. He says in chapter number seven, chapter number 20, verse seven, he says to Abimelech, you touch her. Grazie, I kill you. Because Abraham is a prophet and he will pray for you. That's the first time prophet and prayer are used in the scripture. And so Abimelech was ticked off with Abraham and said, you could have got me killed. Offered seven animals and then in 20 verse 17 of Genesis, the Bible says, and God heard Abraham's prayer and did two things, healed Abimelech's household, and the second one ended their barrenness. That's the end of chapter 20, verse 17. The chapter ends. 
chapter 21, verse 1. And God remembered Sarah. And she conceived. And so the principle is, if you can make someone prolific in areas you're struggling, God visits you and gives you double with a promise. Abimelech's girls got pregnant and had babies. The babies were born without a promise. But now here comes Isaac born with promise. Somebody say, God remember me. The Shunammite woman is quite stunning. And she built a little room for Elisha. Puts a table and a bed and a little chair. And because uh, he's always doing stuff and around there. And, and she says to her, uh, her husband, you know, he's, he, he's such a cool prophet. You know, he's, he's wearing... Uh, designer camels. Uh, I'm so glad you said we don't have to wear jeans this year. <laughs> because I couldn't find any jeans that didn't have holes in them. <laughs> and so they put a room for the man of God there. And so after a few weeks... Uh, if I was in the PAW back then, I'd say, and the man of God said to his servant, what can we do for this lady? She doesn't have anything here. And Gehazi said, she doesn't have a child. So she goes and he says to her, says to her, next year this time you will embrace a child. And she says, don't mess with me. I've already come to this place in my life where I'm comfortable without having a child. I, I've already endured all the austerity, the backslaps, the persecution. I'm fine. And so she gets pregnant and she has a child. And the baby is born, the baby dies, the, the baby is stretched over by the prophet, the baby is resurrected. The man of God comes and says to her, you've got to leave, God has called for a famine. It's horrendous, the famine is seven years. She goes away, she comes back, Somebody has taken her land, her farm, her house, the prophetic expression she built. And so somehow, somehow, uh, the king in chapter number uh, something, in 2 Kings chapter number 13, the king asks Gehazi to tell some stories of Elisha. But just track me for a minute here. Gehazi took... Naaman's payment. And scripture says, Elisha said, the, the, the leprosy that was on Naaman come out of the Jordan and come on you. And Naaman departed a leper. But your fast track to 13, Naaman is in the presence of the king and he's telling stories about Elisha. So where did Naaman get healed? Me thinks Haman got healed in 8 of 2 Kings, where four lepers said, uh, when there's famine in Samaria, they said, if we sit here, we're going to die. If we sit here, we got, if we go to the city, no one's going to help us. Let's go to the enemy's camp and take what they have stolen from us. And it appears that you can reverse a heinous crime by going to the enemy's camp and taking what they've stolen. And so when Gehazi starts telling the story about the Shunammite, she says, I'm here. Tell the story as it is, I'm here. And so the king then says, restore to her all her land, all her servants, and also restore to her as though there had been no drought, make sure she gets paid in full. The deal is the sisters and brothers, when the king remembers you, when the prophetic word spoken remembers you, when a deed that has taken place remembers you and they collide, all kinds of dynamics take place in heaven 
in the stratosphere in earth and no devil or warlock wherever they might be can stop when God remembers you because it's in muscle memory. I feel like someone might get a hole in one. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Something's coming in this service. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, I like it when the Holy Ghost comes early. Amen. And so Jesus also remembers. He serves a dinner for his uh, disciples, which we call the Last Supper. And he says to them twice after handling the elements, do this in remembrance of me. As often as you do it, you do remember the Lord's body. There are some things that you have to remember. And my goodness, there are many, many things that you should forget. The apostles remembered by going through the communion. Paul said to his son Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 8, Remember Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead. If there's anything you should remember, remember that, that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead. Jesus' younger brother Jude in his short epistle said in 17, But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are in significant persecution. The church is being scattered throughout the Roman Empire. Remember, remember the words which were spoken. Amen. In, and, and so in chapter number 11, verse 16 of the book of Acts, they remembered the word of the Lord when he spoke about the Gentiles receiving the gospel. Everyone say, remember. remember. Good to see you, Bishop Sides. You normally sit here. God bless you. And so now to the work of Samson. Samson was a strong man. Dr. N. L. Scott Sr. counsels that we should pray for the strong men and not just for the weak. He also goes on to say we should not cease to pray for the weak, but we must emphatically pray for the strong. Because every time you see a strong man, you see a vulnerable man. It is dangerous to be strong. Samson attracted opponents that he had no idea were against him. Samson was strong and the difficulty with his strength was that he could only wait for the Spirit of the Lord to move on him before he would act. Other than that, he was a strong man that was anointed. So a strong man, let me break the table down, a weak man without anointing is on the lowest rung of, of the ladder. A weak man with anointing does pretty good. A strong man without anointing can make his way. But on the top of the rung, when you have a strong man with strong anointing, three days in a grave can't hold you down. Oh, it's going to be dangerous in here in a few minutes. And so Samson attracted many opponents. He had many haters. And he became the object of small-minded people. Sisters and brothers, there will be many that will be out to get you, especially when you're strong. I'm not talking just about physically, 
I'm talking about financially, economically, politically. You know, strong church. I come out of an organization, all kinds of reasons for that. And our church began to grow by the hundreds, thousands, and, and tens of thousands into other countries. And we were always told, Tudor's church is big because he's compromised. He allowed... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when I think about it. Number two, <laughs> there will be many who will try to bring you down when you're strong. Number three, there will be many that will try to put you in bad light. Number four, there will be many that will secretly try to destroy you. And number five, number six, there are many that will publicly try to shoot you. And so, uh, if, if, if you are anointed, please watch out for Judas because Judas loves anointing. He is attracted to anointing. And sometimes we learn this the hard way. And so Samson is born by angelic announcement. Manoah is told, your wife is going to have a baby. He will be a Nazarite. Two quick things about the Nazarite. Can't cut his hair. And no strong drink. In other words, I cannot afford to have you drunk where you lose control. I always want to be on, in control of your life. And number two, your hair will be separated into seven thick dreadlocks. Seven for the number Monday to Friday, seven for the seven dimensions, seven for the colors of the rainbow, the covenants, seven for the ladder that Jacob climbed, seven for the church ages, seven for the several parables, and we can go on and on and on on sevens. And so Samson then is brought uh, as a judge. But for the first time now in history, we now have a total Christophany in Samson. We have a strong man that is a judge. His problem was, even though he was judging Israel, he did not have the capacity to judge himself or his actions. When the Bible says, judge not lest you be judged, what the scripture is saying there, remember that when you bring judgment on someone else, you have raised the standard by which you in turn will be judged. And so Solomon, when the two girls are presented in front of you, one who slept on her baby and switched babies, that is the Old Testament who slept on her baby and woke up and stole the New Testament's baby and said, it's alive. So when they brought the babies to Solomon, his judgment was, well, let's cut them in half, both of them. And the one that said, no, she can have my baby, that's because the New Testament was not yet manifest. And so Solomon, the standard of judgment that you set is going to haunt you down the road when Jeroboam and Rehoboam come, they're gonna cut your baby in two. Remember the judgment when you judge. And so Samson, watch how you judge. And so then the scripture says that uh, so, um, Samson had extracurricular activities. Uh, visiting, uh, <laughs> just the Joan is here, I, I can't say anything, he's just like, I, I may just go down the, the ranks. <laughs> And so his first escapade is on the way to Timnath with his parents. He sees a woman that's not a covenant girl, 
But the Bible says that God was in that, stirring up an occasion because the man was strong and wasn't using his strength for its intended purpose. And so uh, a lion comes out of a vineyard to grab him. And so the devil's trying to get grape juice on him to compromise his Nazarite vow, but also to get a lion to rip him up asunder. But what was true of Samson, this lion was a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, but he was walking as a lion of Judah. He was like a Christ, so it's lion versus lion marking territory. And the Bible says he he toyed as you would tear a kid. I know you tear a kid, but he toyed as you would tear a kid. And days later when he comes back after getting some honey, he comes and he finds honey inside the, cra- the cage of the lion and sets a riddle. So he's also a mischievous kind of a guy. And so time after time, Samson is having these escapades. But then he meets delicious Delilah. <laughs> The devil knows how deep you really are in terms of desires. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. In my family, my, the Bismarck family are gentle people. We're not hungry for power. We're not hungry power people. We, we, our spirits are calm. Uh, we, we're not... Uh, uh, avaricious, you know, we, we're not greedy, I'm not a money guy, you know, I just, uh, I need it, I'll take it, but I'm not chasing it, the love of money is not in me, and so next year, on, on, in some way in August next year, I will, have cel- I will be celebrating 50 years of preaching, and so tracking this you're right there with us and so go sit down i'm just telling the story and so tracking this when we learned just when my pastor told me many many years ago uh my first month uh, as a preacher he told me about the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and then he said to me it's one of those three So in the Bismarck family tree, there's sexual rage. And every now and then, from out of the blue, I feel rage in my system. And I know where it's coming from. I know where it's coming from. And so yeah, with Samson, this spirit knew exactly what was inside of Samson and arranged for delicious Delilah to keep him company. And so they became so very close. And of course, this closeness is known by Samson and Delilah. But the Bible says there were five lords of the Philistines who also knew that. And so they were now trying to find an occasion to stop this man. Because he killed a thousand of them with the jawbone of an ass. He lifted up the gates of a city and hurled them somewhere. He was causing them much hurt. And so when they found Delilah, five lords of the Philistines, each one to to attack the fivefold ministry inherent in him. He was apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, all in one to deal with any kind of giant. Five, he had all kinds of crazy grace flowing inside of him. Inside of him, he had five loaves that could take out 5,000 men anytime he needed a loaf to be appropriated. He was the five stones that David took out of the brook. All in him is a giant killer. It's all in him. But he couldn't handle Delilah. And so they came and, and listen, she was a better business 
man, woman, than, than Judas. She got a thousand from each Lord. Judas got 300 pieces for the Messiah. He should have read Judges. <laughs> <laughs> and so Delilah then says to him, Hey, baby. How you doing, baby? And you know, I'm not a morning person. I'm really grumpy in the morning. I thank God for Jehovah Java. <laughs> Grande Americana, double shot. So, he's like grumpy. Uh, I was thinking about going to the mall this afternoon. And so they go to the mall, they do whatever they're doing, comes back, fixes him a dinner he likes. And she said, oh, you look so fine in that leather thing I bought you. And he's a little chirping. Oh, yeah, thank you, baby. Oh, yeah. And she's like, do that again. I'm not selling any videos, man. Sorry, Miss Joni. And, and, and turn to your neighbor and say, she's working him. She's working him. She's working him. Every man is a big puppy. That guy that's a big, you know, exterior, uh, don't be caught. Every man is a big puppy. And so she's working him. And so, you know, hey, baby, I got your, your, your bath together. Those bath salts I got there. You know, just soak in there and so on. I'll have the rose petals ready and so on. And, and then now she's going through his long hair, going through his long hair, and, uh, and says to him, uh, you know, where'd you get your strength? You're so strong. You're so strong. And, and so the Bible says she pressed him. In other words, she leaned on him. Have you had anybody lean on you? She like pressed him. So she starts this, mm, 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 mm. She, she please, I'm not talking about anything that happens in our world. It's like, mm, 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 mm. Where'd you get your strength? Where'd you get your strength? Oh, it's in the grits. So she doesn't give him grits. Oh, it's in the lamb chops. No lamb chops. Can I get you pork chops? I'm a Jew. <laughs> and so she's working out every angle, every alternative, every alternative. And so her counterpart is seen in the New Testament because she's pressing him and pressing him. And, and so uh, one day he starts getting too close. And, and uh, while he sleeps on her lap, you better be careful where you sleep and, and who you sleep with. Uh, it's not a bad thing to sleep because, because Adam slept and Eve came out of Adam. Uh, Noah slept and he got drunk. Abraham slept and God cut a covenant with him. Jacob slept and a ladder came out of his head. Pharaoh slept and uh, seven fat cows came out of him and seven fat sheaves of corn came out of him. Jesus slept in Gethsemane and shed blood and intercession to carry him along the way. Lazarus slept, but Jesus woke him up after four days. Jesus slept and turned out after three days with a glorified body. And, and so it just depends where you sleep. Too much sleeping is foolish because you can be sitting in an apostolic window while Paul is preaching apostolic truth and fall down and kill yourself in a window of opportunity. Amen. Uh, and so, so he chose to sleep in, on Delilah's lap. And so uh, he says to her, well, the strength that I have, you know, she's pressing him now. If you tie my, my head with, with, uh, with new ropes of gut, 
in chapter 16, verse 11 and 12. You tie my, my dreadlocks with, with uh, some ropes with gut. I'll be like an ordinary man. And she's like, baby, baby, the Philistines are here. And she says, why are you messing with me? And he's, no, we're just goofing. Third night, second night, in chapter number, uh, again, verse 11 and uh, 7 and 8. If you weave my hair with a web and fasten it with a pin. And so he falls asleep. And she says, the Philistines are upon you. Now, go to chapter number 16, verse 16. 16, verse 16. Where, where is he coming on? Chapter 16, verse 16. And the scripture says, and she pressed him daily. She pressed him daily. She pressed him daily. Gets up in the morning, where's your strength? Coming into the bathroom, where's your strength? Going out of the bathroom, where's your strength? Going to the mall, where's your strength? Taking a walk down the road, where's your strength? It reminds me of the lady in, in Luke chapter number 18, where the Bible says that there was a widow woman that came to a judge and said to the judge, avenge me of my adversary. And so the judge went to the golf course and here's this old girl, avenge me of my adversary. And so now the judge has gone to Randall's and while he's trying to clog out his booze, here's the girl, avenge me of my adversary. He's trying to pay for his ticket uh, in the parking lot. She's standing right there, avenge me of my adversary. He goes now to meet a client somewhere and here she is again sitting at the desk where he's supposed to sit. Avenge me of my adversary. She brings him a sandwich and goes into his office and says, avenge me of my adversary. And the judge says, this girl's going to wear me out. I don't fear God. I have no regard for any man. But this honey is going to drive me crazy. I don't even know what somebody has done to her. But I'm ruling on her behalf. That's how we ought to pray. When you wake up in the morning, put pressure on the heavens. When you're driving your cheap Corolla, put pressure on the heavens. While you're getting a haircut, put pressure on the heavens. Delilah did the same thing. She was leaning on the man. She was putting pressure on the man. And the Bible goes on to say that he told her all of his heart. From when I was a boy, my head was never touched. That's where my strength is. I've never had my hair shaven. And the Bible says, uh, when he slept, he told her all his heart. He slept so hard, he didn't know someone was messing with headship. <laughs> We can't have the church in America sleep so hard and the headship of the church is being cut. We can't have our churches sleep so hard and some sort of devil has a razor to cut our hair. Shout your name three times and put wake up at the end of it. Wake up Tudor. Wake up Tudor. Wake up, Tudor. The world is in trouble. You're sleeping at the wrong time. Your family's in trouble. You're sleeping at the wrong time. Anointing is going away. 
you're sleeping at the wrong time. Shout, don't cut my hair. And while he was asleep, they cut off his hair. While he was asleep, they cut off his privileges. While he was asleep, they cut off his prayer life. While he was asleep, they cut off his anointing. While he was asleep, they cut off his gift. While he was asleep, they cut off his communication. Can I preach like I'm feeling it now? While he was asleep, they cut off his power. While he was asleep, they severed his strength. While he was asleep, they cut off his spiritual instinct. While he was asleep, they cut off his generations. They cut off his future. They cut off his vision. They cut off his hope. They cut off his love. They cut off his promises. But most of all, they cut off his precious relationship with the God who called him. He didn't know that he was no longer on the same page with the old man. And when she said, the Philistines are on you, he jumped behind the pulpit without any studying, without any mechanics, and found he didn't have the dynamics. He thought he had a text, but the text stopped pulling on him. Can I preach like I feel it now? How dare we get up on a Sunday morning and assume we have a text that God has given. We need deep study. I've been praying for a month, six hours a day for this message. For this message I've been pulling on God. How dare do I stand behind Rod Parsley's pulpit and come with a matchstick and try to start a forest fire. It would be immoral. And so I've walked the streets of my city, walked the land where we're building the cathedral, calling for God to do something. Because it's time now to understand the Philistines are playing dirty games. And so when they grabbed him, the mistake they made, tell someone they made the mistake, they should have killed him. They should have killed him. I don't know what was in their head as to why they didn't kill him. Devil, I should have been dead and you should have killed me when you had the chance. Ah, yes. They should have killed him, but they took out his eyes. Ask Stevie Wonder, and he'll tell you, he sees more than all of us put together, because having eyes doesn't make you see. hi ya 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 So they bound him, and they made him grind, put him in a prison cell, I live in prison because the way I got there is the way I'll get out. And so while he's grinding, sin will bind and sin will grind. And as he's going in circles, God is calling him to remember the devil is a mocker, is a mocker. But God, every step is ordered of the Lord. And I'm starting to remember now. I'm remembering what mama said to me when I was just a little boy. I'm remembering what mama told me when I was the only kid that never had a haircut. 
on the day school started. I'm the only kid that never had a haircut when school ended after one year. I'm the only kid whose hair smelled of dust because they didn't have head and shoulders. The devil is a liar. I remember the persecution when they said I was a Rasta pasta from Jamaica man. Yaman, Jamaica Irish. And what I thought was against me was actually working for me. What I thought was breaking me down was actually lifting me up. I'm starting to remember. Give someone a high five and say I'm starting to remember. I remember when I first got the call to preach. I was so tired yesterday, but I remembered the first time the anointing hit me. I remembered when I was baptized in a ditch in stinky water. I remembered when I was ordained at the age of 23 in an old church with used oil and big old men laid their hands on a skinny boy. I remember the night I received the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues at a girl guide hall. Devil, you should have killed me even though I can't see but my inner eyes I'm seeing. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. I am coming now. Tell someone I'm coming. I said tell someone I'm coming. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. He remembered the Holy Ghost. He remembered the Holy Ghost. He remembered the Holy Ghost. How the Holy Ghost touched him. He remembered the Spirit. How the Spirit built him. You gotta remember how the Holy Ghost will guide you and anoint you and keep you shout hallelujah shout praise God and sisters and brothers chapter 1622 as he was grinding one thing the Philistines forgot his hair began to grow ah, yeah. The government was growing. His gift was growing. His anointing was growing. His faith was growing. His confidence was growing. His sense and his purpose kept on growing. Give someone a high five, say grow man. Grow, grow your prayer life. Grow, grow your fasting life. Grow, grow your church. Grow, grow your worship. Grow, grow your giving. I'm growing, the devil doesn't know it. I'm growing, the witch doctor doesn't know it. I'm growing. I can feel it inside of me. I'm looking at you and I can see you growing. You don't sound the same way you did last year because I saw that you've been growing. Give yourself a high five. Shout Tudor. I'm growing. The devil is a liar. I said I'm growing. Grow. 
grow. I need 10,000 people to clap your hands and grow your worship. Shout, I'm growing. Shout, I'm growing. And so the Philistines were having a party. Shout, the devil's having a party. They can party all they want. This crazy government of yours can party all they want. They can legalize all this rubbish they doing. Having their silly little party. But down in the basement, Samson's are growing down in the basement. Intercessory prayer is growing down in the basement. Tongue talkers are growing down in the basement. Blood washed people are growing down in the basement. Revival is growing down in the basement. True worshippers are growing. I don't like contemporary gospel music that is written on a drum beat and three chords. It's total nonsense. Give me a lyricist. Give me a biblicist. Oh yes, give me a melodist. I want to go to the house of God and hear a message in a song and hear a melody in a word. The devil is a liar. Devil, have your party. Church of Wicca, have your party. Witch and Warlock, have your party. God haters, have your party. Liberal minds, have your party. Money curses have your party, but in the basement, it's been growing. Ah, yeah. Come on, can you feel your strength? When I am weak, then I am strong. I'm getting stronger. And when they brought Samson, 3,000 in the balcony. They belittled him and gave him a little boy to lead him. But they didn't know that the little boy was a hope for the future. And he said to the boy, lead me to the pillar on which the building stands. From the basement to the pillar, from disgrace to exoneration from humiliation to one proud moment in my life shall it's my turn to perform right now for this reason was I born for this moment shout with a loud voice this is my moment this is my moment Delilah, you can keep the money. Delilah, thank you for the kisses. Delilah, thank you for the intimacy. But it's time to kiss you goodbye. Goodbye, Delilah. Mommy, I broke your heart. Goodbye, Mom. Judges, it's been great being a judge. But I'm kissing the judges goodbye. I now have the final judgment. Get me to the gates of hell. Get me to the pillars of the gates of hell. And when he got there, I said when he got there, he prayed the prayer. Ha la 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 la. Ay, 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 ay. Oh Lord, if you ever start praying, start with oh Lord. Ask Saul on the road to Damascus, who are you? Yeah, oh Israel, 
the Lord your God is one Lord so he said oh Lord my God remember me remember me shout remember me give someone a high five say God's about to remember you remember me when I'm in trouble remember me when I'm falling down remember me when the nights are so dark remember me when I'm weary in my body remember me when my soul is broken and my heart is crushed remember me when troubles surround me remember me when I've done the best I can and it's not good enough remember me when betrayal is knocking at my door can I preach like I feel it there's something heavy right here remember me when tormenting spirits attack my life remember me in moments of famine remember me remember me when I pray and I'm knocking on the door for bread and no one wants to open for me remember me when I'm stuck in this house for 12 years and I can't get out because of my issues tell seven women God's about to remember you Remember me when the enemy attacks me. That's better. Remember me when friends are not available. Remember me when I'm persecuted. Remember me in the midnight hour. Remember me when the load gets heavy. Remember me when the cross is too hard. Remember me when I'm bleeding out. God remembered Sarah. God remembered Joseph. God remembered the king. But Lord, as you remember me, strengthen me. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. Make me strong. Strengthen me. Stabilize me. Strengthen me. Keep my head right. Strengthen me, keep my emotions tight. Strengthen me, keep my belly on the ground. Strengthen me when the enemy comes in like a flood. Strengthen me when Goliath is running at me. Strengthen me when the religious system attacks me. Strengthen me when NBC, MSNBC, ABC, CNN come against me strengthen me when colleagues in the body of Christ talk about me and shoot before me shout God's about to strengthen you if you don't have strength twice in the Bible angels came and strengthened Jesus after 40 days and out to pray in the garden so if you need some strength there's an angel that came to church with you that angel that angel is gonna strengthen you fix that arm fix that life the angels of the Lord and camp around those that love him they are more with us than they are with them and while you strengthen me ah he prayed uh, let me this once remember me this once i may not pray again but this once 
tell someone you got one more prayer make it count one more wish make it count one more whisper make it count remember me strengthen me this once remember me strengthen me this once he was born in Bethlehem fled to Egypt came to Nazareth went to Jordan baptized of John lived in Capernaum follow me I'll make you fishes of men preached for three and a half years took him to Calvary nailed the strong man on the cross but he went into hell found the pillars put down the pillars the devil's house came down 3,000 died with Samson 3,000 were Christ-like on the day of Pentecost Heavenly Father remember me in your prayer the Bible says before he died the thief on his right side that's the New Testament son of my right hand said to him remember me when you come into your kingdom the thief on the left side was the Old Testament it had to be buried and its legs broken and when Jesus and when Jesus and when Jesus went to paradise he went with someone who had broken legs like Adam had broken legs but he fixed mankind's legs and came out on the third day the one he came out with first not Lot's wife don't remember Lot's wife I'm coming with the thief because the thief cometh not but for the steal to kill and to destroy but the thief has stolen I'm restoring what the thief stole sevenfold seven for Samson's rocks seven for Jacob's ladder seven for the church ages I'm taking it back so Lord remember me as I leave dominion remember me remember me as I go to my house remember my sick child remember my mother my father save my family remember my church remember your promise remember your gift remember your anointing remember me Give him a praise, praise, 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 give him a praise, give him a praise, praise.